Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to another episode of Fishing with Rod. Welcome to Merritt. Uh, it's, uh, I guess, mid-June and we're kind of halfway through the lake fishing season now. Um, travel restrictions have finally been lifted in BC, so we're finally out here having an um, enjoyable day. What looks like to be, should be an enjoyable day. Sunny, it's uh, not too hot, should you just be perfect for trout fishing today. So I brought my friend, good friend Aaron, right here. Ah. And uh, so Aaron and I, had, and I have known each other for 20, 20. 25 years, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah, so we used to go to UBC together. We used to be physics lab partners and we did <laughs> chemistry together. So, but the last time I fished with her was back in 2007. And I, I, I think, I do have a video of that oh, on really? my channel. Yeah, okay. we're fishing with Kokanee. <laughs> so I put a link up so you, can, you guys can check it out. But yeah, so t this is her first time fishing at one of these lakes around Merritt for rainbow trout. Um, well, I shouldn't say first time because yesterday we fished. Um, we filmed a little bit, but it was really windy. We went to Lumpum Lake and uh, it was like a hurricane <laughs> at one point, <laughs> but we did get into a few fish. So she had a bit of a taste of how the fishing is. Today we're fishing at a more remote lake just outside of Merritt and uh, there are Panasque rainbow trout in here. I'm hoping that we'll get into some um, because those are really exciting to catch. So stay tuned. We're gonna start around 25 feet. Um, so I got a spinning rod set up for her, just dropping the fly straight down, and um, and got the rod sitting in the rod holder. So if a fish grabs it, hopefully we'll see that rod just buckle down. And So it's been a been a slow start. Um, we we've been at it for about an hour now. Um, haven't seen anything uh, on the sounder, and uh, but finally got a feisty one here. This one is going under the boat and could be going around the anchor in a minute. So I am gonna switch seat with Aaron. All right. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so when, when a fish gets around the anchor rope, you, you just don't panic, you know? Like, don't pull it because you're gonna... Then the fish will definitely come off. Just go with the fish, go around the anchor rope, go get out pretty fast. Yeah, that's not a bad fish. I think, yeah, not a bad fish. Nice fish. Uh, this will be a. Uh, we will keep this fish for, for eating tonight because Aaron's gonna cook it up. First fish of the day. Uh, nice one. This is a perfect eating size rainbow trout. So I decided to keep it because I don't know if we're gonna get another one today um, because fishing is kind of slow uh, right now. But it could be a slow start. We got we still got you know quite a few hours left. Yeah, beauty. Okay, so we're gonna have a very productive day. It's been a good day, don't get me wrong, but um, after that one big fish, we pretty much caught nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but beautiful lake though. 
but uh, this is a really pretty lake. I, I've, I've done well in the past, but uh, just not today. But that's just how fishing sometimes, lake fishing is sometimes. You know, the fish are just um, cooperating. We didn't see many fish around, and it's getting windy again. That kind of, you know, made fishing tough. So, but for now, we're gonna pack it up, pack everything up. We're actually gonna get back to the hotel and cook this fish up. Okay, we're back at the hotel. I've done the catching and now Erin's gonna take over and do the cooking. So she's just filleting the fish and um, getting rid of the ribs. And I'm not sure what we're doing yet. <laughs> not sure what she's cooking. So it's gonna be a surprise, I guess. So this is a Penasque rainbow trout that has been in the lake for a couple years. And uh, you can see how orange the flesh is. Um, the, they, they eat pretty well. They eat shrimp, they eat um, insects. They eat all kinds of crustaceans in the lake, so that, that makes them um, very, very orange. And the meat quality is great, so we're gonna try it out, we're gonna cook it up, and show it to you all. There you go. I'm gonna mess here for now. This one's rice vinegar, but don't mind the cordial. And then this one is mirror. <laughs> um, we have a little bit of white miso. Soy sauce. Two tablespoons miso and taste so we'll use a couple teaspoons of oops rice vinegar and I'm gonna use a couple teaspoons of mirin four teaspoons of maple syrup so you're making like a marinade, uh -huh. um, like a miso based. Miso based soy, sort of Asian inspired, I guess, uh, marinade. That's okay. really adjustable. If you like things to be a little sweeter, you could use more maple syrup. Um, mm. You don't have the miso, honestly you don't need to. You can do it yeah. just with the soy. Mm. I like to use a little bit of raw garlic, so I'm gonna just grate some in.
I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, it took a while, but yeah. <laughs> All right, let's try it. So we got trout that's been marinated in uh, miso, miso and soy and a little bit of sweetness. Um, sorry, maple. Uh, we have some togarashi spiced asparagus and a black rice sort of risotto uh, <laughs> as well. Yeah, fancy after a fishing trip. Hmm. Yeah, it's All good. Right. Yeah, the yeah. sweetness is good. <laughs> yeah, I was skeptical, but yeah. <laughs> no. Hmm. Try some of the fish. How's the fish? Hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, I like the make maple on it. Yeah. So today's Panask Rainbow Trout. Excellent. We're gonna. Finish off dinner and we got one more day of fishing tomorrow. We're gonna try to do our best to get a few more fish. So, yeah, despite of today's uh, dismal performance by <laughs> me <laughs> not finding the fish. No. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't, yeah, I was expecting more was fish today, <laughs> but um, but this, this is making up for it. Again. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm filming all the time. <laughs> Day three, we decided to come back to Lumbum Lake. We had quite a few different choices, but after not performing yesterday, getting getting one fish, um, we decided to come back here just because we know there are fish here. We did pretty well uh, two days ago. Had about ten fish on, so yeah, we want to get some, into some more fish. But around Merritt, you have lots of different options. So today we actually had several other options. We could have gone to a couple other lakes for brook trout as well, or a tougher lake for bigger rainbow trout. But we decided to come back here with uh, lots of fish. Uh, not necessarily bigger fish, but um, just lots. Hopefully we can get into quite a few hookups. There's quite a few people around out already, right? Yeah, everyone's having a good time. And there's no wind. <laughs> no wind, finally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, it makes you so tired when it's windy. <laughs> that was a good move. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Thanks for keeping an eye out. Yeah. Ooh. Nice one. At what point do you. Oh, you're good. You're good. Uh, yeah, yeah, because you can't do anything about it, okay. right? If you run, and then when it's not running, you can, you just kind of slowly. Oh, it came off. Oh yeah. <laughs> it came off. It was a big one. Yeah. Oh well. Alright. Yeah. So if you, if you run, don't reel. Don't reel. Okay. And, uh, and when, when it's not running, you, you slowly lift the rod up and reel down. Reel right? down. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I was worried that as soon as it stops running, that yeah. it will get loose. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It start, if it stops running, that's when you reel, right? Okay. So, yeah. That was like right away as soon as we moved to a new spot, yeah. and uh, marked one big fish, and she got one right away.
Oh, little miss around. So this is a Fraser Valley. I can see it from the. I think it is. It's a pretty pretty decent sized fish. So. Oh, look at that. Eh? Yes. size phrase value trout rainbow I think we'll keep this one it's a uh, nice and healthy it's very fat um, yeah so this is a Fraser Valley rainbow trout um, from this lake this lake does have that and blackwater rainbow trout you can tell by the spotting on the fish it's got spots pretty much all the way down to the bottom part of the body and uh, it's also very very fat um, typically they they grow they tend to, they tend to grow wide then long this fish is 17 inches long so we can decide to keep this one you can keep two fish a day here well uh, one being over 20 inch and the other one being less so this is one of my two fish that's gonna go home and make a good dinner So we forgot to pump the fish, now we're gonna gut the fish, see what they're eating because we're still seeing quite a few fish in the sound just right now but we haven't been getting bites in the last 20 minutes I guess So we're thinking that maybe we've got the wrong fly pattern down there Oh, all these coronavids that are falling out Oh okay, yeah, yeah, there you go Yeah, so we've got quite a few coming out now So we clearly using the wrong fly here um, We got black and red on the line right now but turns out this, this fish, most of the chronomers coming up have been silver gum metal with a brown rib on them. So I'm gonna switch up, see if that will make a difference. Another fish in the sound there. Oh yeah? Yep. Big one? Yep. Maybe they look nice when they down deep because the water magnifies. <laughs> but this one is. Oh, this one. Oh. He looks huge from down there. Yeah. Oh. one. This one's closer to 20. Beauty fish. Another Fred Valley fish. We just had a, almost had a double header there. And uh, yeah, another nice one. Beauty fish. <laughs> nice. Woo. Well, that wraps up another spring lake fishing episode for 2021. I hope you all really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this trip. Um, Aaron and I have been friends for over 20 years as I mentioned earlier and the last time we fished was over 10 years ago So it was really exciting for me to see her coming out experiencing one of my favorite fisheries in BC 
For this particular trip, we stayed at the Best Western Plus in Merritt and uh, from the hotel, within a very short drive, roughly between 10 and 20 minutes, we could access many different lakes and many fantastic fisheries. Not only there's a good number of lakes to choose from, but the diversity of fisheries around this town is fantastic. Um, as I've shown in previous episodes, you can choose a lake that has many fish in it. Um, like we've done in two of the days during this trip, you can catch lots of fish up to 20 inches or maybe even bigger and take some home to eat because they're really delicious. Or you can pick a lake that has a more difficult access but can potentially produce much bigger fish as well. There's also a good diversity of species, including several strains of rainbow trout, there's brook trout, there's kokanee at Stump Lake, which isn't too far from Merritt as well, as well as pike minnow, there's bull trout. So yeah, there's a bit of everything for everybody. For this particular trip, the weather was a little warmer, surface water temperature was a little higher, so fish were found in slightly deep water, up to 30 feet or more. I decided not to fly fish because everyone doesn't fly fish, and um, I want to try out this new method by dropping our fly vertically down with our spinning rods and bait casting rods. So this is a Shimano Talora rod, which I just got last year and I've been dying to try this out. And I coupled this rod with a Shimano SOX XT low profile bait casting reel. This is a kokanee trolling rod, um, but I thought, well, let's try this out by dropping my fly vertically down to 30 feet deep and see what would happen. It's a very soft rod and as you can see in the video, the take from these trout was insane. It was, it was pretty much every single take we had, the rod just went dropping straight into the water. Big shout out to Justin Sanders for tying these beautiful flies for me to try out and they certainly work. Justin is a commercial fly tire based in Vancouver. I'll leave a link on the bottom for you guys to check out. And don't worry, we'll have a more detailed video to show you the exact setup that I use for this particular fishery very, very soon, I promise. Many thanks to Tourism Merit and Freshwater Fishery Society of BC for supporting this project. I really enjoy lake fishing and it's my pleasure to show you these experiences so you can go out and enjoy these opportunities as well. And many thanks for, to you for your support. And uh, if you enjoy content like this, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And uh, if you have any questions regarding lake fishing in BC or if any other fishing techniques, um, be sure to leave a comment on the bottom. I'm always happy to answer them. So thank you for watching boys and girls. Until next time, good luck fishing.